Hello, uh, Dirk Wallinger, CEO of York Space Systems. Uh, I wanted to kind of talk and do something a little different. I wanted to talk about what we're seeing in space now, uh, how it's changing, what's different, uh, and, and then I'll circle around uh, to how York fits into that and, and what we're doing. Um, so, so I want to talk about exclusivity. There's a lot of talk about data. Uh, what we're not talking about is what we see terrestrially, which is exclusivity. What does that mean? Well, if, if you look at corporate espionage, right, what, what fundamentally is that? It's one company who wants so desperately to know what another company already knows, they're willing to steal for it. Uh, we see that all the time. That's how valuable knowing something that your competitors don't is. Uh, we've seen that in 2009, uh, saw China uh, go through and basically steal topographical maps from every single energy company there was. Why did they do that? They had maps, they didn't. They wanted to know, know where that oil was. More recently, uh, we had the, the director of Breitbart come out and say that uh, their fundamental strategic advantage over their competitors was they had exclusive rights to Breitbart data that they fed into their election models. That was the game. That is how the company existed. Uh, now today, data is shared among everyone. Why is that? Because it's too expensive. What we're gonna see, and what we're already seeing, is growth and change in the industry. We're gonna see new competitors come in who can acquire data affordably, uh, and they're gonna acquire it just for themselves. We're gonna see this fundamentally change the industry, and, and candidly, it's gonna grow the industry, which will be good for everyone in this room. So we've seen lots of these pictures before, photosynthesis directly measured, not very often. Uh, we've seen pictures of oil tanks that you can measure. There's no infrared out there. Uh, you have maps on the top right identifying precious resources and where they're at. All of this is extraordinarily valuable. It's valuable when I have it. It's valuable when someone else has it. It's valuable when you have it. It's infinitely more valuable when I'm the only one who has it. Okay, That's what we see in the real world. That's what we haven't seen in space to date because of the billions of dollars that was just talked about that panel. That's what everyone thinks it costs to get information in space. It's not true. Uh, for three to four million dollars in less than a year, new space companies can be generating revenue off completely new data sets that none of their competitors have. This will drive demand in the industry and growth for all of us. So how does York fit into this? Big tirade on exclusive data, how does York fit? Well, York fits in that we offer the complete turnkey solution. What does that mean exactly? Well, if you look at companies like FedEx, UPS, they're logistics companies. They, their core focus and their value is in being good at logistics and figuring out how to do that for customers. You know what they don't do? They don't build their own planes and they don't build their own trucks because it doesn't make sense to do it. It's a distraction from where they generate revenue and it's a distraction from where they're gonna be better than their competitors. That's what York enables. We enable the companies that we saw on that last slide and even the analytics companies that exist today to be able to collect new pieces of information that make them better than their, than their competitors. Uh, you can have great AI, you can have great machine learning, but if you have information that your competitors fundamentally don't, your projections are gonna be better, and that's a fact. So now what we're seeing is that York can enable these complete solutions. We work with a wide variety of launch partners, work with a wide variety of, of downlink partners. Some of them are here, uh, had great questions earlier. Uh, but what we can also do is operate the satellites on behalf of our customers. We can integrate the satellites, and obviously we make the spacecraft too. So what we now do is York produces spacecraft uh, on a production line, available ready to ship uh, starting next year. And what we're doing for customers is going and get that data. Customers now come to us and say, hey, uh, it's York Space Systems, infrared data is something that is not commercially on the market. I want it, can you make that happen? Our answer is of course, yes we can. And now our customers have a distinct advantage over all of their competitors. We've seen, Let's talk about affordable data. We've seen this before. It's not sexy. Oh yes, it's, it's, it's more affordable. Why would that matter? Well, look at the one data set that's out there that's affordable and available to everyone, right? GPS data. GPS data was designed to help missile find its target and help troops figure out where they were. Now it gives me directions to my grandma's house. I took an Uber over here, created the entire rideshare industry, uh, grocery delivery, food delivery. Turns out GPS can even help tell the weather, okay? Unimaginable but it all came out of a data set that was made available affordably to the market. We saw entire industries created. What happens when we have hyperspectral data? What happens with LIDAR? What happens with infrared? These are opportunities for entire new industries to be created 
when that information can be gathered affordably. We don't need the mega constellations of data that exists already. We need new information and new data sets, and we need to be able to get them into orbit very quickly. If you look, everyone talks about the amount of data, the amount of data that's out there. It was a little bit in the last panel, right? Most of it is vis visible imagery. There's a little bit of SAR, there's a little bit of GPS occultation, but that's about it. Visible imagery is 0.0035% of the spectrum. What happens when a spectral band in IR can accurately tell you the exact moisture content, right? How many industries will be created from that? So we're, we're really just barely chipped the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we are nowhere near what can actually be harvested from space and brought to market. Uh, and this will actually create this healthy ecosystem. So rather than large sums of money that may or may not fall over and become nothing, which hurts the entire industry, Creations of these new data sets will create entire industries and create a robust ecosystem in space. That's how we'll get the democratic revolution of finance. That's how we'll get all the other things that are gonna enable this industry to be successful. So now I'll talk more specifically about York. Great year for us last year. Um, York Space Systems, we moved into our brand new engineering and design facility where we'll oper operate our satellites as well. Uh, we stood up a flight software lab, which is now doing analytics in cooperation with Metropolitan State University, who's now developing that capability and that curriculum for their students. Uh, also working heavily with advanced manufacturing. Uh, just below us is the Advanced Manufacturing Institute. We work hand in hand with them to develop the next technologies to help us more rapidly innovate our capabilities and our platforms to make them better each day. Um, we're excited, we're moving forward. We have launches coming later this year and uh, several throughout next year. Uh, we have customers uh, in Europe and in the US as well, uh, and now bridging customers in Asia as well. Uh, the one great thing that we all get out of space is that it is intrinsically a global industry. We don't develop an app in one city and then have to figure out the logistics of gr growing it globally. Once we've launched one satellite, we are a global company. It can expand from there. So it's kind of good for all of us. Um, so that's. A little bit about where York sees the value, how we fit in enabling these new sets, sets of data to be collected. And I uh, thought I'd leave a couple minutes for questions. Went through a little fast, but the last one ran a little long, so I'm, I'm helping him run out. <laughs> any, any questions? There you go. Uh, what are the size of the satellites that you're building, and what's your roadmap? Do you plan to stay in that size class or expand to larger or smaller? Yeah, good question. So about the size of a, a hotel, U.S. hotel mini fridge. Uh, so really we're sized for ESPA. I think that's a good fit. There's rideshare options available. We're compatible with Rocket Labs Electron, Virgin, Vector Heavy. Um, you can do several on a Firefly. You could do a couple to, on, a, on a Virgin. So it's a good size in the sense that there's a, there's a lot of capability for you to get them up. Um, and, and we're compatible across all those launch vehicles. Um, yep. 85 kilograms, 100 watts, orbit average. Um, now there's there's kind of standard options of the platform. It's a little bit like how you buy your car. There's options for, you know, you can buy your car and there's option for navigation. Well, we have several different propulsion systems uh, which we, we can accommodate. Uh, there's actually a, a high current energy system that can be worked that can double your power and then also do up to 3,000 watts peak. So there's a couple different options that kind of help it have different capabilities for, for the different mission sets. Anyone else? No? All right. Well, I appreciate the time. Thank you. <laughs>